Hi everyone and welcome to this video all about scale factor. Uh, we're going to have a look at three different examples of scale factor in this video. First we're going to simply find a scale factor. Then we're going to find a scale factor and then use that to find an unknown side. And then we're going to find a scale factor and use that to find the area of a different sized shape. So a couple of things to note in scale factor is this. So our first scale factor to worry about is just normal or what we call K. All right, and that's just the general shape. So that's like the outside dimensions of the shape. So that's for dimensions of the shape. Okay, now when we want to find the area of the shape, we're going to get to that a little bit later on uh, and it's going to be slightly different. So K is just going to be our scale factor. If I draw a nicer K than that, K will be our scale factor. So let's dive straight in. Uh, scale factor obviously being used in a range of different things such as uh, models, uh, blueprints, all sorts of weird and wonderful things. So let's get stuck in. First thing we'd like to notice here is that we have two shapes, one labeled A and one labeled B. Now for ease of use, I like to make uh, shape A, the first shape, my denominator and my uh, second shape my numerator when I set up my fractions uh, because to find scale fractor you're going to set up some fractions so let's have a look at that so scale factor or k as we were saying before okay is going to be shape 2 over shape 1 or shape B over shape A. Okay, and that's going to keep us uh, making sure that we've got the right factor going. So from this one, we're going from a large to a small shape, a larger shape to a smaller shape. So we want to use a fraction or some way of making our numbers smaller uh, rather than bigger. If we were to go from shape B to shape A, we would go the other way around, okay? Just the easiest way to do it at this point. Now, we have two different types of matching sides here because we want to find our corresponding sides, our matching sides. Uh, so if we have a look at shape B, we can see that shape B is a little bit smaller than shape A, but it's also been rotated around. All right, so it's had a rotation, whoops. Didn't mean to do that one. It's had a rotation. So that's going to help us find our corresponding sides. So here we have four, the number four and the number 12. Those two guys, they're matching, they're corresponding. And the other two guys, so this three and this nine, they're also corresponding, okay? So these are the corresponding bits and pieces. So if we go back to our scale factor problem, we can use either four over 12, which is our blue matching sides or our blue corresponding sides, or we could use three over nine, which is our yellow corresponding sides. These guys are actually equivalent fractions. All right, these are actually equivalent fractions. And equivalent fractions uh, are going to help us find our sim simplified one, our simplified one being just another equivalent one. So either one of those is going to get us down to one over three 
So our actual scale factor of k is one third. Now, if we wanted to write this as a ratio, if we wanted to do this as a ratio, we would write it as one to three. Okay, that's our ratio is one to three. Uh, hopefully that's starting to come together for you. So that's just finding the scale factor. So let's have a look at question two. Question two here. This time we've got a couple of triangles. And we've got similar triangles with an unknown side. So we're going to need to find a scale factor. And then we need to find our unknown side. So again... I'm going to label my shapes A and B. Okay, so over here I'm going to go K. K for our scale factor. All right, is going to be shape B over shape A. All right, so this time we're going to look for our corresponding shapes. You can see they haven't been rotated at all. All right, but we can see that this 48 corresponds with the 8. The 48 corresponds with the 8. So we're going to use that in our fraction. Keeping in mind the idea of shape B being the numerator, shape A being the denominator, gives us 48 over 8. 48 over 8. Okay, now if we simplify that down, we're going to get 6. Okay, it can also be written as 6 over 1. If we really wanted to keep it as a fraction, and as a ratio, it would be 6 to 1. So then our next part of this problem is we want to know what x equals. Okay, so x is our unknown side. All right, it's got a corresponding side here with the 10. So I'm just going to go uh, 10 times 6 because the 8 gets multiplied by 6 to get to 48. So the 10 gets multiplied by 6 to get to its uh, value, which will be 60. Okay, we don't have any units for this one, so we can just leave it like that. Okay, one more example, guys, and you'll be able to get on your way. Here we go. This one's a little bit trickier than the others. We still have two shapes, two triangles that I'm going to label A and B. All right. Now, this is where we have that issue I spoke about before. So now we're using, looking for the area of the triangle. So if the dim dimensions scale factor, the dimensions scale factor, is k, our area scale factor is actually going to be k squared. Okay, is going to be k squared. I might just tidy that up a little bit. Okay, so before, when our scale factor was 6, if we wanted the area, we'd go 6 squared times 10 or whatever it is um, the area is. And then uh, we'd use for the other one a third squared. Okay. Now for this one, we are given the area of the smaller triangle, which is 3 centimeters squared. All right. So that is the area. All right, uh, we want to know what the area of triangle B is though. So triangle A is three centimeters squared. We want to know triangle B. So we just do the same process as before. Okay, so K, we just want to find K first and then we can do the rest. So K, we have our corresponding sides of five centimeters and two centimeters. Okay. B goes over A, so shape B over shape A, K 
gets us 5 over 2. Let's make that a little bit clearer. So 5 over 2 is our scale factor of k. But we want k squared. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we want k squared. So when we set up our area problem, so our area of shape B, we're going to take the area of shape A, which is 3 centimeters squared, and we're going to multiply that by the square of k, so k squared. So in this case, it's going to be 5 over 2 or squared. Now the reason I put it in brackets is so that you know you need to square both parts of our fraction. Okay, we need to square both parts of our fraction, not just the top bit, not just the bottom bit, but both bits. Okay, need both bits. And for this, we can just go straight into our calculators, that's what they're there for. And we're going to have 18.75 centimetres squared. Now these examples have come out of the Cambridge Mathematics Standard 1 textbook. And you are more than welcome, it's in Chapter 7, to go and have a look at some questions. Uh, this has been a short explanation on how to use scale factor or find scale factor and then use it to find unknown sides and an area. Thanks for watching.